Hi, Jose De La Portilla here. Thanks for tuning in to Toolbox Tuesday. Today we're going to showcase the Amprobe IR710 infrared gun, okay? This is not a thermal imager, this is just a laser scanning temperature meter. There's a lot of talk about these and there's a lot of guys who use them. I think they're a good product if they're used properly. But what I see a lot in the field is people using them improperly. So first let's talk about what this thermo uh, thermometer will do. This is the IR710. It has a temperature range of 0 to 716 degrees Fahrenheit. Its accuracy is plus or minus 2%. It has a min-max setting and it has an emissivity setting of 0 uh, of, I'm sorry, an emissivity setting of 0.95. So it also has a distance to spot ratio of 10 to 1. And we'll talk about what that is. Okay. First let's unbox it and show you what we get inside the package. Pretty easy to open blister packs. So when you open it up, you got your thermo, thermo gun, your thermo, thermometer. You got the packaging, and inside you've got your installation manual or your user manual. You got an extended uh, user's manual, and you have all the manuals on a CD ROM. So, in case you want to upload them to an electronic device, you could put them on a computer, email them to the device, save them in your library, or on your phone, your tablet, whatever. For a laser gun, you might not need all the instructions. Uh, on a more advanced one, there's some reasons I would keep it, and I'll explain that later. But let's put the packaging aside and let's look at the product itself. Small, compact form, fits pretty easy in the hand. You'll notice when I fire it, I do get a red light indicating where about I'm trying to aim. Look at the back, it's got the little screen protector on it. We're gonna peel that off so we can actually see the display. And we've got a, fire it up here. We've got the temperature displayed. We have a Fahrenheit or Celsius button to change how we make our measurements. We have a min-max button so we can record the minimum or the maximum temperature or turn it off. We have a button here so where we can turn off the backlight, turn on the backlight, and turn on or off the red dot to indicate what we're working with. Okay. So, handheld, measure some pretty quick temperatures. Let me show you how it works first and then we'll show you, tell you a little bit about some of the features you need to be aware of, some of the functions you need to be aware of. So what I'm gonna do here is put this in, in my hand. Again, I'm just gonna shoot the palm of my hand and you see the temperature displayed there. Looks like um, what about 90 some odd degrees there. Okay, so there's my temperature. Notice also that right now it's set to the min scale. So it recorded 91.2 as my highest temperature and it looks like about 90 degrees is my lowest temperature. So let's go ahead and do this again. See if you can see the display. There it is measuring my hand. I'm gonna pull it away and measure the desk. It should be a little bit colder. Release, and it's gonna record my warmest temperature, and in the bottom, record my lowest temperature. So let's turn that around, and let's go to the max setting, simply by pushing the button, and let's do the same thing. Record the temperature of my hand, record the temperature of the table, and it's gonna record the last seen temperature, it'll hold it, and the maximum temperature that it's seen. I'm also gonna turn the backlight on and turn the laser on. So now I get the little red dot that I can see where I'm shooting. Okay. Push that again, you can turn them both on or off. Okay. So overall, easy to use, handheld, I like the min-max function, gives you a great ability to see what you're shooting as you scan. Let's talk about some of the challenges that are associated with using any of these laser guns, regardless of the brand. And that's first and foremost, if you're trying to get a good accurate reading, you need to understand the distance to spot ratio. This is critical. A lot of people think that when I shoot this and I see the little red light, that that's exactly where I'm measuring the temperature. Couldn't be further from the truth. It has a distance to spot ratio. Every thermo gun will, every laser infrared thermometer will. Basically what it's saying here is this thermometer, this, this laser gun, has a distance spot ratio of 10 to one. Meaning for every inch you are away from the surface you're shooting, the circle that it's measuring temperature from here is 10 inches. So if I was one inch away, I'd actually be measuring a 10 inch circle. 
okay? Not a big problem if you're up close trying to measure the surface temperature of something. But if you do what most of us want to do, we want to walk into a room, shoot the temperature to get a quick temperature split between the return and supply. And a lot of us want to do it so we don't have to get a, late, a ladder out. Okay, I get that. But here's the issue. If you're in a 10 foot, if you're in a room with a 10 foot ceiling and you're 10 feet away, let's think about the size of that circle. So let's go back to that 10 to one. That means that if I am one foot away from what I'm shooting, then that's a 10 inch circle or a 10 to one ratio. 12 inches is how far I am away. That means that if I'm a foot away from substance, I'm shooting a 120 inch circle around it. If you're one foot away from an air conditioning register trying to get a split, and you're measuring 120 inches around, that better be one really big register or else you're picking up ceiling temperature. Let's go to a more realistic measurement. You're in a room with 10 foot ceilings. So 10 feet away at a 10 to one ratio, 12 inches in a foot, you're measuring a 1200 inch circle. You're not gonna get accurate splits, okay? But what you are gonna do is notice differences. So what I tend to do with them is as I'm using them, I start with my measurement. Let's see if I can get the laser to pick up here. I start with my measurement and I scan across. Start in one area, move slowly to scan across to see the rise. As I see the rise, I can record changes. I use these all the time, I'm not gonna lie. I keep one in my tool bag, the same model, so that when I'm in a home and the unit's just been fixed and it's turned back on, I can quickly shoot a return, shoot near a supply, and see that it's starting to blow some cold air. I know that it's functioning. Um, but I'm not gonna use it to record an actual split. The challenge with, a, with one of these guns here that's a little bit different is also a very important feature you need to know of any thermal gun, any thermal laser infrared gun, is a good quality one that's gonna give you more accurate readings needs to have an emissivity scale. Emissivity is the fancy word for reflectiveness. And every material you're gonna scan has a different reflectiveness. And unless you're calibrating your meter to the item that you're measuring, your numbers could be off. So for this gun here, I'm not gonna use it to rely on super, super accurate measurements, but like the packaging shows, maybe if I'm working in an electrical panel here and I'm scanning to see which breaker is overloaded, which conduit's overloaded, I'm gonna pick up the hottest circuit and know which one's working the hardest. If I need a quick diagnosis of if the system's even running, I can get a split. But would I ever use it to measure superheat and subcooling? Not likely. Uh, restaurants use these a lot to measure the temperature of the water in their boilers or in their steam tables. For something like that, they're pretty good. But for good, precise temperature split measurements that we're gonna calculate system performance on, we're gonna wanna go to a real temperature meter, a K-type thermocouple, something that will two temperatures at once. For a fat, but for a fast, quick, and easy measurement, you can't go wrong with something like this. Just don't bank on these being solid numbers for your splits. So that was a quick review of the IR710 from Ampro. Good quality meter, seems pretty rugged. Flip open here to get to your battery compartment. Small compact form would fit easy in a tool bag next to your meter for some quick accurate measurements, but just don't rely on it for everything. And know the rules of the spot distance. Something like this will give you a 10 to one, but one of those cheaper ones you get at a discount hardware store, man, those distance ratios could be anywhere from 10 to one to 20 to 25 to one. Know what you're looking for and make educated purchasing decisions on what you're looking to get. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next time on Toolbox Tuesday.